is an author, videographer, video maker, researcher, and uh, all around good person because the the this world needs a little more optimism. And in covering heavy topics, it's good to have a sense of humor. It's good to have a, a light touch so that we can pass this around without scaring people. And more recently, she has produced the Deep State Encyclopedia. I welcome to the show. Really graceful. Grace, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Richard. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. This book was a, a really insightful read because it brought back a lot of topics that I haven't you know, looked at for a long time. And I really liked how it's not just an encyclopedia. It's almost like there's a theme to it that if you read all the entries, there's something more to be learned to this whole situation. And I'm really curious in, in some of these in instances, I saw where there were some longer entries and that to me indicated you had a deeper interest in some of these entries in here. And uh, I'm really curious about how you came to these topics, because these are all off the beaten path for people, right? These are all outside what people know as normal reality. They would call them conspiracy theory. Sure. In fact, yes. that's a term that's even covered in here. So if it's not taught to us, we're automatically conditioned or indoctrinated to think of it as conspiracy theory, but mm -hmm. it remains only a theory until you start getting the who, what, where, when, why, and how of these things. And then you can start to see, oh, there's facts of conspiracy. And if you put the facts together, you can actually have a bigger understanding. So when in your life did you start becoming interested in these types of topics? And when did it later occur to you to organize them and put them out in such a useful book? So I started becoming interested in these topics when I left my corporate job. Uh, I worked in a cubicle in marketing for a long time, well, a couple of years out of grad school. And I did all kinds of video for professional sports, like commercial video for professional sports and stuff like that. So it freed up a lot of time eventually. And um, I only had a couple clients when I left and I started what things were going down. This was back in 2014. And we had all of the Black Lives Matter riots sort of emerging at that time. And I that's when I started really noticing these buses of people with these professional signage and t-shirts and everything um, conveniently located next to these pallets of bricks, pallets of water, everything like that. And um, I said, wow, that seems orchestrated. And, it, and the news crew doesn't seem too totally concerned with it either. So um, it's almost like it, a script rolling out. So that's how I found that my foray into all of this was really through Black Lives Matter and George Soros. So I had a YouTube channel before um, I started doing conspiracy content, hidden history, conspiracy, stuff like that. But I was doing a fashion internship in college where I would use my YouTube channel to sort of interview people on campus and say, you know, what are you wearing today? <laughs> and what's your outfit of the day and stuff like that. Kind of cringe um, looking back on it, but that material is still on there too, because it was all part of the journey. Right. Um, but so I already had a YouTube channel established at that time. And it'd been a few years since I had posted on there. Uh, cause I went back to, you know, working a normal job and not being in school and things like that. So my first video back was who is George Soros? And that took about six months for it to be removed from YouTube. But in that time, um, <laughs> it was just, I opened up a can of worms. Like once you start looking, you can't look away from this. You you absolutely cannot. So I started compiling notes around that time, um, just links and things of that nature that uh, were of interest to me. And I would take down notes, take down links, catalog of all of this. And years later, when I'm trying to reference those links, I'm noticing these things aren't there anymore. Even like what people consider uh, valid media, you know, legacy media, They've taken down articles, especially on George Soros, by the way. Um, and so I began to wonder, oh, you know, maybe we do need to document some of this material off of the internet. We need to actually have it in print, um, something you can have in hand. So through my videos, through all of that, all the notes that I took, this was 
the Deep State Encyclopedia was basically a compilation of all those notes, all those things. And certainly some topics are a little longer than others. But um, yeah, George Soros was my entry to all of this.